tonicity and osmoregulation. That's the college board's term. I wish that was just called osmosis and its consequences. A student places a gummy bear in a cup of water overnight. The next day, the gummy bear has expanded. Explain. Use the principles of osmosis to explain each of the images below. Explain the function of the contractile vacuole in freshwater protists such as paramecia. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com where we guarantee your success in AP Biology. Please sign up for a free trial today. So let's start by defining what osmosis is. It's the diffusion of water. Water diffuses like everything else, and that means that water is going to move from higher to lower concentration. Water is the solvent of life, so we have to pay attention to how it moves. Water flows down its diffusion gradient, just like everything else, from hypotonic to hypertonic. Those are essential terms to know. Hypotonic means relatively more water and relatively less solute. And these terms are not absolute. They're always relative to another solution. So in this diagram, this side is hypotonic. It has a higher percentage of water molecules. It has a lower percentage of solute molecules. This side is hypertonic. And that means that it has relatively less water, a lower percentage of water molecules, and a higher percentage of solute molecules. But that's this compared to this. Now, what is that going to do? That's going to have water move down its concentration gradient, which means it'll move from here to here. After osmosis takes place, it'll look like this over here. This level will go down. This level will go up. The water actually is getting pushed up on this side. That's called osmotic pressure. It has enormous consequence. And the thing for you to memorize is that water diffuses from hypotonic to hypertonic. Here's a fabulous and fun example. A student places a gummy bear in a cup of water overnight. The next day, the gummy bear has expanded. Explain. Well, the gummy bear is mostly sugar. The water in the cup is 100% water. Water always flows from hypotonic to hypertonic. So water is going to flow from the hypotonic solution in the cup into the gummy bear. The gummy bear will expand because of osmotic pressure. Osmosis in plants. Use the principles of osmosis to explain each of the images below. On the left side, the cell is hypotonic to the environment. Water leaves the cell. The membrane peels away from the wall. That's also known as plasmolysis. The vacuole shrinks and the plant wilts. How could the environment be hypertonic to the cell? How could the cell be hypotonic to its environment? This environment has to have, for example, a lot of solutes dissolved in it so that it has a lower water concentration than is in the cytoplasm. That'll cause water to go from the hypotonic cell to the hypertonic environment. In the middle, the cell is isotonic to its environment. That's a new term. Isotonic means that the solute concentration and the water concentration are the same on both sides of the membrane. So water enters and leaves, leaves and enters at the same rate. And on the right side, the cell is hypertonic to its environment. So water flows into the cell. That osmotic pressure in the case of plants is called turgor pressure. It causes the vacuole to expand. It pushes the membrane against the cell wall. And this is a good situation for plants to be in. It makes them full, firm, happy. They're not wilted. Osmosis in animal cells. Use the principles of osmosis to explain each of the images below. Cell number one, the cell is hypotonic to its environment. Water leaves the cell. Water always flows from hypotonic to hypertonic, so the cell shrivels up. In situation number two, the cell is isotonic to its environment. Water enters and leaves the cell at the same rate. This is an important condition for animal cells because they have a membrane but not a wall. Cells that are kept in a tissue culture need to be kept in an isotonic solution. And in situation three, the cell is hypertonic to its environment, and therefore water is flowing 
into the cells. And because there's no cell wall, the membrane can't really stop the inward force and the cell will ultimately burst. Is AP Bio making you feel overwhelmed and inadequate? That's completely reasonable. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. The material is complex, the pace is brutal, and the vocabulary is ridiculous. But at learn-biology.com, we've created a way that makes it easier for you to study. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Explain the function of the contractile vacuole in freshwater protists such as paramecia. A protist is a eukaryote, that's not a plant, an animal, or a fungus. Protists in freshwater are hypertonic to their freshwater environment. That means that the cytoplasm has more solutes dissolved in it than the lake or stream that they're swimming in. And as a result, water moves into these cells by osmosis, flowing from hypotonic to hypertonic. To osmoregulate, that's a new term, osmoregulate means to regulate your osmotic balance. The contractile vacuole, that's this organelle over here, fills with water and then contracts to expel water from the cell. If the environment becomes more hypertonic, then the cell can adapt by decreasing its rate of contractile vacuole contraction and do the reverse in more hypotonic environments. Describe the structure of leaf stomata. Stomata are pores that are on the underside of a leaf. If you took a leaf and you did a microscopic cross section, you'd see layers of cells. The top layer and the bottom layer are responsible for waterproofing the leaf and they're covered with wax. But nevertheless, the leaf needs to be open to its environment in order to exchange gases and other material. Um, each stoma, which is singular, stomata is plural, is formed by two guard cells. So here's one guard cell, here's the other guard cell. And when there's sufficient water, these guard cells buckle outward like that, and that creates a pore that allows carbon dioxide to enter the leaf for photosynthesis, but also allows water vapor to escape. These stomata can be regulated. They can close in response to environmental cues, including water stress, and then open when water is abundant. Explain how guard cells are regulated in order to open and close the stomata. When water is available, cells adjacent to the stomata pump potassium ions into the guard cells. So we're talking about these cells and these cells, the ones that are adjacent to the guard cell, and they're represented like this over here. So pumping of potassium makes these guard cells hypertonic to the adjacent cells. Water follows by osmosis, causing the guard cells to buckle and open up. When water is scarce, the pumping stops, potassium ions flow out of the guard cells and water follows by osmosis, causing the stomata to close down, to revert back to this form. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.